Hey there gang, I thought I might do a quick little video on uh, Thunderbirds of War. This is uh, the bombing of the Reich, January through June 1943. Looking at it from uh, Bomber Command Group 6, uh, from their perspective. And it's a little title from Paper Wars number 79. And let me just uh, tell you what the name of the designer's name is. It is here somewhere. Michael Boucher, I think it is. Or maybe even Michel. Uh, he might be uh, French-Canadian, by the sounds of it. But uh, this is an interesting little game. It is not uh, very complex at all, and it is very straightforward to play. In fact, I've played uh, now on my second, end of my second mission, and it ended successfully. Uh, so, um, given that the fact, historically, 75% loss rate uh, for the uh, crews, so very high loss rates, and... Um, there was also a uh, very high loss of aircraft. Uh, the Canadians went through a lot of effort to build up their own air force and have uh, their own bomber command. Unfortunately, they got most of the cast-offs uh, with the, the Wellington aircraft, the now antiquated aircraft. So there's lots of bitching and moaning about systems not working properly. Uh, they didn't necessarily have full... Um, full crews for everything either you only get to pick uh five uh crew members in your early part of the campaign it's not till later in the campaign where you actually get to add a sixth uh <coughs> excuse me a sixth um or seventh even uh crew member i believe and you have these you know, this concept of crew quality points where each successful mission you uh complete you rack up your uh, points and that allows you to add a beneficial uh, little chits to your and die roll modifiers and things like that or re-rolls to your uh, team that you build and you pick a crew every scenario and then there's a random uh, scenario generator or a historical scenario uh, generator uh, that follows the timeline of the actual events and one of the first events that uh, where the, the, the fellas uh, flew was down in Lorient. And uh, that mission went off without a hitch. Uh, it was uh, cloudy and heavy cloud. One thing I will say, there seems to me to be, uh, unless there's some way you do it by turning the counters, there seem to be two counters missing. A heavy clouds counter and a crescent moon counter. They are not available. Uh, you can flip these over. There's new moon, cloudy and clear, but there's nothing for light clouds. Uh, or heavy clouds, and there's nothing for uh, the crescent moon. Uh, so that's a, a shortcoming. And given that there's 20 or 30, or at least 30 spare counters, I'm surprised that they probably just didn't make the uh, make the cut in terms of the, the checking and proofing of the game. Not a big deal. So you fly out, and as you fly out, you choose your path. And so you put all these uh, these flight path markers down on your flight out, and they all either have event or no event on them. And then you fly over them and you uh, look at what the event is uh, based on pulling a chit out of a cup. And you look at the number and then you get the result. And then you can, uh, that is applied to you either immediately or it may have some future impact, whether that be something like uh, adding plus one to the die roll on the results table for the Luftwaffe to try and find you and things like that. And then when you get to one of these shaded hexes here, that's going to give you, that's where you uh, begin to, perhaps move to low altitude and you're going to suffer from flak if they spot you and things like that. So you then go into your bombing run and then you have your bombing run and you've got to come in a flow low altitude into the flak zone and you uh, roll for that on the little flak table there. How many times the flak have a chance to have a go at you? Uh, then you actually get over the target and uh, you roll a flak die there as well. And then you drop your bombs, assuming your uh, aimer or bombardier has uh, spotted it by rolling against this general results table. And the general results table is interesting, and I, I see why they want to keep it uh, simple. But uh, what this means is you only have four chances in 10 uh, of uh, being successful on anything. But it also means your enemy only has four chances of being in 10 of being successful in finding you as well. Actually, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, so four chances in 10. Uh, then these modifiers from the uh, from the events will impact that result but nevertheless so it so if things if you roll poorly for the Luftwaffe they're not going to have a chance to get at you even if you roll uh, 
you know, a four and you and you're using and you've flipped over the high uh, Luftwaffe chip and they have three attacks, they have three chances to spot you. And if they spot, then they have three chances to hit you is how I've read the rules anyway. And so, uh, but only a you know, 40% chance to actually do some damage. Now, when they do do damage, it can be pretty nasty. And so uh, there's this tension that gets built in by uh, this airframe track as you uh, flip over results. So the first one was no effect. The second one was a critical hit on uh, the uh, heat, heat and looks like heat and oxygen. Uh, let's see what else would have happened if we had gone further. Oh, lots of no effects. Yeah. Um, well, look at that. Well, there's no effects. Well, that was that would have been pretty boring if we had have got through those anyway. But there are, in fact, lots of... Uh, how did I manage to pull all of those? There are all sorts of different uh, hits with the, the bomb bay and uh, just a crew hits and things like that. Uh, so it builds some tension there. Uh, if things don't go real well, once you get back, uh, you're going to have to make a survival roll. And that's where all sorts of bad things happen to people. You can see the different sort of results that can occur there. And the other thing that may happen is as, you, uh, as you're flying along, you have this fuel and you get a certain number of fuel points based on how many... Uh, how many of these event flight path chits you lay out and uh, you lo you use them up as you fly around uh, through each hex and then of course when you take hits and perhaps you have to stay at low altitude and you'll have to spend one extra fuel for every two hexes you move well, all of a sudden you may end up looking like you might have to ditch in the uh, the channel or something like that and that is not pretty so and you can see those results up there so all in all a super fast playing game you can literally crank through a game in 15 minutes uh if you want to just kind of you know play the game uh if you want to absorb all the story that may be going on and uh, try and evolve the narrative in your head and take your time and think about it then absolutely there may be a few other things that uh will go on and that will take a little bit more time uh there are lots of different uh little segments in the game where uh, you are pulling chits to generate the action. So you feel like you're participating in the game and you're pulling your crew and, and choosing what you're going to do with the crew and what uh, uh, benefits you want to give your crew. Uh, you know, do you need a flight engineer to get a plus one on his role if he's going to try and repair something? Uh, this is a bad chit. Boom. I love that. Uh, you know, are you going to, as these guys get hit, you turn them over and stuff like that. Can you repair a wound or whatever the case may be? So lots of things can happen where uh, you, you get to make some choices based on the mission that you run. Uh, and uh, obviously the flak changes depending on the, the color codes here. I didn't really explain that. I love this return. Uh, what is this? This zone here is uh, hell three dice. Uh, that's the worst areas. That's the Ruhr zone, zone five. Anyway, fun little game. I highly encourage you. If you like B17, you're going to love this, I think, and you're going to be able to play this even faster than B17, and you're going to have probably just as much fun, if not more fun, because you're more involved in a lot of the different decisions that need to be made rather than playing against the game. And for a solo game, that is one of my biggest beefs, and there's very few solo games I actually like. I would now have to add this one to, to the fact that I like it uh, to the list of uh, likes, which would be a total now of two games that I like that are solitaire. All right, I look forward to catching up with you guys soon.